when he defeated Andrew Ponzi. Now, here we are at that famous match. Willie Moscone had 123 points. He needed two to win. There's Ponzi's score. He had 124. But Willie Moscone has got the cue. And here he is making a shot which will tie the score. A the simple shot. But the difficulty is, is that he's stymied himself. You can see him behind that ball down at the end with no clear shot at this ball down at this end. There's the cue ball. The arrow's pointing to it. And here's the object ball, which he decides he's going to make. There's the ball that stymies the shot, the arrow that you see there. And what he's decided to do, uh, after some thought, is to go around five cushions, one, two, three, four, five, and to tick the object ball down at this end and drop it into the pocket there that you see the arrow pointing at. Now, you see up there on the board, it says, it's a boy. Moscone, just before he made this shot, he discovered that he'd become a father. And here is the shot, those five cushions, ticking the object ball into that pocket. And that won in the championship in 1941. That's Jimmy Karras, four times world pocket billiard champion himself, trick shot artist, close friend of Willie Moscone, used to go on trick shot tours with him. That's a different friend of Karras's lying on the table with more courage than this reporter will ever have. Watch this. The mouth untouched, the ball deposited in the object pocket. George Plimpton, of course, with me. George, you pick up as Willie Moscone does his thing. Well, as you can see, this is a trick which involves a pair of two, uh, pool tables. There's the cue ball. He's going to hit it down here to the 15 ball, which is going to pop the cue ball there on top of the cushion across six feet of space here onto a second pool table, way down here to the end of the table where it's going to hit the cushion, if you can believe it, Howard, and bounce back and deposit that object ball, there it is, into that pocket. You've got to be <laughs> kidding, Mr. Plimpton. This is absurd. Let's look. There it jumps the table, and there you are, Howard. <laughs> I don't know how they can pull off tricks like these. Here's Karis about to do another. A graphic, even as the shot is executed, will illustrate. <laughs> no problem for Jimmy Karras. Here's Moscone again. That's a uh, matchbook cover. He uses there as a sort of a ramp, and he'll drive the cue ball. It'll hit the matchbox cover. Bounce over that six feet of space down here where there are four balls on this table, and he's going to sink all four of them. Here's a graphic which uh, will show what's going to happen there. It hits the uh, matchbook cover down onto this table, hits those two balls there, and all four balls, balls will go in there, the two object balls, and the two balls that hit them are going to go in there too. And the thing to remember here, folks, is that there are no film editing tricks, just one camera. Willie Moscone really makes that shot. Again, six feet of space between the tables. There's your old friend Pete Smith, Joe. Oh, yeah, he's the, uh, he's the famous producer of the Pete Smith specials. This, this one was called Super Q-Man. And this is a cigarette trick. He's going to try to pop that cigarette into uh, Pete Smith's mouth. You'll hear that famous blurp of music. At the, at the trademark goes <laughs> there it goes. He even lights him up. Willie Moscone at his very best. It's the way he looked in 1949, and the skills have not at all diminished today when Willie is 61. There's the matchbook cover again, serving, as George said, as a ramp. This is an amazing trick. The ball goes into that, uh, the cue ball goes into that cluster of six balls there. He'll sink every single one of them there. The graphic shows you where the balls will go to their respective pockets. And here he does it in slow motion. Ball bouncing over the little ramp there, across six feet. Bang, into that cluster of balls, and there they all go. One, two, three, four, five, six. The last one goes in. Get a shot like this during the course of a game. Don't be afraid of it. It's an easy shot. Play right in the corner pocket. You can't miss it. Now, if you can't get away with that one, you bank it back into this pocket. Now, this is a legitimate shot, and this is the shot Paul Newman made in the motion picture, The Hustler. Let's see if we can make it. There we go. Now, a short mass A shot. This is one where we try to make a ball in this pocket. The cue ball goes part way up the cushion, comes back again, and makes the second ball. I'm going to try to make both of these balls with the one shot. Here's one you can rip the cloth on. He's going to elevate the cue, try to hit the cue ball on the right-hand side, low, hit it hard, cue ball should go up the cushion, come back, 
and make the blue ball. I'm going to try to give you a demonstration of a lazy man racking the balls up again. Playing the yellow ball. The yellow ball back into the pack. That should get it. This is the lazy man's rack. He's going to hit the one ball with right hand English, hit the third diamond on the left hand side. It should hit three cushions and come back into the pack. Now we're going to play a shot. Jackie Gleason made in the motion picture The Hustler. This is one where, while they were playing what we call a bunch of safeties, that is, they were trying to stop the other guy from making a shot. And finally, this situation developed with Gleason shooting. Now, Gleason called the four ball, this purple ball, out of the pack, back into this pocket. This ball, right here, back into this pocket. Now, let's see if we can make it. Purple ball. There it is. Shoot the cue ball into the left-hand ball of the first two. Now, the one on the right will get out of the way. The one he shoots into will go in, hit the nine ball. The nine ball will hit the four ball and send it into the pack. Now, he's going to get three, three kisses around the pack, and the ball will head right back to the pocket. Now we come to a shot. Well, you saw the shot that Gleason made. Now we come to one that Paul Newman made. Now they played two different times. And the second time that they played, Gleason started the game off by breaking the balls. Now the cue ball, the white ball, wound up down at the other end of the table, and this cue ball was stuck behind a cushion so that Newman couldn't see or hit any of the balls. Eddie called this four ball, in this case, the purple ball, out of the pack into this pocket. Now let's see if we can make it. Purple, purple ball, right hand pocket. The way you play the shot is to aim the cue ball about a half a diamond past the side pocket. The cue ball comes off the cushion, banks into this four ball. Now the four ball caroms off the ball next to it, hits the five ball next to it, and it caroms off into the corner pocket. Gleason, Newman, they get credit for all these shots. Here's one that I made. We call this one the machine gun shot. Now this is one where we line a bunch of balls along the cushion. And then the cue ball, the white ball, is supposed to run along the cushion, touching every ball or nearly every ball, before making that blue ball in the pocket. And as the cue ball runs along the cushion, it kind of makes a sound that resembles the chatter of a machine gun. Playing the two ball, the blue ball, in the pocket. The way to play this shot is to hit the cue ball with high right hand English. Hit it very hard. It should hit in between those two balls. And then it'll carry them along the cushion, and make contact with most of those balls along the cushion before making the last one in the pocket. Now for a demonstration of a drunkard. A drunkard going home early in the morning. I would say about two o'clock in the morning. Now the balls I'm setting up right now at the present, these balls are going to represent lampposts. And in this case, the maroon ball will represent the drunkard. This one right here is the drunkard. The rest of those balls represent lampposts. He's going to try to get home in that side pocket without touching any of the lampposts. 
Now let's see if we can do it. Playing the maroon ball in the side pocket. The seven ball, maroon ball, side pocket. Right straight home. These balls in front of the side pocket there's four rows of them, are placed at an angle. Now the object here is to hit the five ball first. The five ball hits the 13 ball, sends it forward. It will hit the first ball, first row, and open up the balls. In the meantime, the cue ball hits the five, caroms off, hits the seven, and sends it right straight into the side pocket. Oh, well, anybody can make these shots, folks. Here's one that you can set up, play, have a lot of fun with. First of all, you get all the balls, and you kind of make a semicircle of the balls from the cushion on out. If I can get all the balls together. You make a semicircle of the balls from the cushion on out. Now you'll find that if you place a ball in the center of this group, and you shoot that ball right smack into the cushion, well, it can't go through these balls. It has to bounce off of them. So in this case, you come all the way around and back into this pocket. Now you shoot the maroon ball in this case in one direction, it turns around and comes back in another. Playing the maroon ball, the seven ball, back into this pocket. Can't miss the shot. Try to make six of them this time with a one shot. I don't know whether I can do it or not, but I'll give it a try. That's a little better. Might make it. All right, the object here is to try to make this orange ball in this pocket, the green ball over here, red striped ball into this pocket, purple striped ball in that corner, the blue ball over there, and I hope to come around the table and make this one last. All six of these balls, one shot. Here you have to play this shot with high left hand English, but you must hit the object ball, the five ball, one third of the ball on the right. And then the cue ball goes, hits the first cushion, goes three cushions, comes around and makes the ball in the corner pocket. You saw the short mass A shot. This is what we call the long mass A. Now we're going to try to make a ball over in that pocket. Of course, another ball in this pocket. And if I can get past the side pocket, we'll go up the table and make that one. Now all three of these balls, we're the one shot, I hope. Now here you have to elevate your cue almost straight up and down. And you must hit the cue ball with low right hand English. And you must hit the shot hard. Here's another old timer. We're going to try to jump a ball out of the triangle, up into that corner. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. You know, it's tough. 
to make this thing go in one direction, turn it around and come back in another. Yet it can be done. Now you take this shelf. This white ball is going to be stuck behind three balls. Now we're going to try to make the white ball go up past this triangle, swing around the triangle, come back and make this ball in this pocket. Play in the purple ball in the pocket. I hope. There we go. We made it. This is a shot where you can very easily rip the cloth. This is one that you have to play with the ex extreme low right hand English. You must shoot that ball on a little angle toward the left. Hit it hard. The cue ball should slide up ahead of the pack or the rack, swing around it, come back and make the ball in the corner pocket. A six ball shot. Six balls in six different pockets with one shot. Incidentally, this is a very easy shot. All you have to know is where to place the two center balls, and then you make combinations out of the balls into the corner pockets. Six balls, six different pockets with a one shot. I hope. I've got to check this one first. Ready? All right. I'm going to try to make six balls in six different pockets with one shot. Ball in every pocket on the table. This six ball shot is played on a four by eight table. The two center balls should be placed halfway between the diamond and the side pocket, and the balls should be lined up with the inside of the corner pockets on both sides. But the shot should be hit very hard with the center ball. All right, we're going to try to make this black ball come out of this cluster, jump over the rack, jump over the balls, and I hope jump into this corner pocket. First of all, you place four balls, approximately a diamond and a quarter from the corner pocket on the right hand, lower right hand cushion. Now you place them more or less a diamond shape. Then you hit the first ball of that cluster and the ball will come out, bank off the cushion, go across the table, hit the rack, jump over the rest of the balls and into the pocket. This might be a three ball shot here, a four ball shot. We're gonna try to make this red ball inside pocket, red stripe ball in the corner. Then the cue ball is gonna go up the cues and it's going to make contact with the ball that I'm going to be placing on the cue sticks. I have a, a sort of a matchstick here. I'm going to place this matchstick on the cue sticks to hold the ball. And then it's going to roll down and the cue ball is going to try to catch up with this blue ball and make, well, the, the, uh, the 10 ball goes in the side pocket. Then the cue ball is going to come down behind the two ball and try to knock it in the pocket too. So let's see if we can do it. I'm going to try to make four balls with one shot. Yellow ball on the side, the blue ball in the corner, this third ball, the red ball in this pocket, purple ball over there. Now all four of them, where the one shot? You hit your cue ball 
in the center, hit him between the second and the third ball, hit it hard. Now the one, two, and three with the one shot. And we're going to try to make the yellow ball in that pocket, the blue ball in this pocket, this ball here, the blue one in that pocket, and the red ball right there. All three of them, one shot. Hit your cue ball with high right hand English. Hit the blue ball or the two ball a little bit to the right of center. It should carry them off, go into the left hand pocket. In the meantime, it sends the yellow ball forward into the right hand corner. The cue ball carries off, hits the three ball and puts it in the right hand pocket. There we go. Well, truly an amazing demonstration by the greatest of all time, Willie Moscone, and something for you to work on, let's say, in your leisure time. Willie, come on back and talk just a little bit about, let's say, gamesmanship in championship pocket billiards. Was there any, um, oh, I don't know, what you might call uh, sneaky little moves involved uh, when you were playing for the title uh, with <laughs> any of your competitors? Most of them had their little tricks, Bill. I remember... Uh, Andrew Ponzi and uh, Ralph Greenleaf and people like that, Benny Allen and so on. Uh, with uh, Benny Allen from Kansas City, former world champion, every time you went to shoot and he was facing you, you were shooting toward the corner where he was sitting, he would take out a handkerchief and start, it, he'd start to wipe his bald head and I swore to God that handkerchief looked like a tablecloth that was so big. But he never did it unless you were shooting toward him and the game got down, down toward the end. Another one was Irving Crane. He had feet that big. And every time it seemed like you went to shoot a critical shot toward him, up those feet would come one of those things, you know. So I finally got even with him. At the end of the frame, after around 14, they had to re the ball. So I used to go over and start to, start to put powder on my hand. But I make sure they get the powder right over where his feet were. <laughs> and I miss a few times. <laughs> I, I give him a good powdering, in other words. Ralph Greenleaf, he used to have a habit of leaving the room. If you were shooting, he would leave the room and go to the men's room and then come on back. It was sort of a dilatory tactic, you know. They'd do anything to try to get you to miss. You didn't have any little tricks. Well, yeah, I did, really. If they got too close to me, I would trip them. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, your career spans so many years. Can you go back in your own mind and think about, let's say, the greatest trick shot you ever did? Yes, it, it was making 16 balls with one shot. 16 balls. The cue ball went in, too. It made all 15 uh, numbered balls, plus the cue ball. When did you do that? I did that back about 1949 in California for one of the old Pete Smith shorts. Oh, sure. Remember short subject? Mm -hmm. He's got that, and he also has me jumping the ball from one table a distance of 10 feet onto a second table and making six balls with one shot on the second table. Now, come on. That was the end no of No tricks? I mean, <laughs> you actually did that with no trick photography? Oh, no, that was a legitimate shot. And by the way, Bill, that was the end of all the trick shot shorts. After we did that one, what else could they do? You know, that was it. Well, we're glad that you could share these experiences with us as we have the world of pocket billiards of Willie Moscone. Certainly nice to be with you again, Bill. Pleasure.